Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. Today's video is going to be about the top five things that I wish I would have known when I was going through IVF. So I decided to do this video not because I didn't know these things, but sometimes they're not explained to you with emphasis or, you know, sometimes I think just your expectations are very different. So I want to talk about, you know, the experiences I had during my treatment. Number one, the appointments. So you know when you go in and you get explained the whole fertility treatment cycle that there's going to be plenty of appointments. So you know there's going to be blood tests, you know there's going to be nurse appointments, fertility special appointments, um, ultrasound appointments, and you expect that there's going to be a lot but what you what I didn't realize was that they were going to have to be done there and then so what what I mean by that is that if I needed to get my bloods taken at a certain time I needed to be there at a certain time if I needed to get my ultrasound done at a certain time I needed to be there for my egg collection my egg pickup you know these were kind of non-negotiable appointment times I went into it thinking oh yeah it's fine I'll just book all my appointments around my work schedule this and that you know and what happened was it didn't turn out that way so number two for me was egg collection or should I say post egg collection so I was explained the whole procedure and a lot of people said you know you don't really need downtime you probably have to go straight to work you know um, it's not that bad for me I had 17 eggs collected so I had a lot of bloating um, headaches and just general general I was just uncomfortable so what that meant for me was I was like down and out for a couple of days so I was really lucky that I had my egg collection done at the end of the week so I was able to rest over the weekend so if I have to do it again and when I do it again I will definitely be taking a couple of days off after egg collection just to rest and relax and you know I may not have that experience again but I definitely wouldn't want to be at work feeling that uncomfortable after my egg collection. Number three the symptoms. So what I feel like I wasn't explained enough is that the symptoms that you experience from your trigger injection and your egg collection can be quite the same as early pregnancy symptoms. So I experienced a lot of sore boobs, you know, slight cramping, tired headaches, which all lead to the signs of being pregnant, right? Except it's really hard to decipher what is pregnancy and what is the symptoms from your fertility treatment. So during the nine, nine day wait, which I will get into in a minute, um, there's a lot of unknown, right? Like, am I pregnant? Am I not? You know, and there's a lot of chat out there on the internet about it. And, you know, the more you, more you research, you just think, oh, maybe I'm not pregnant. Maybe I'm not. Obviously in my case, I was pregnant, but at that time you kind of start psyching yourself out and you just think it hasn't worked and you're going to have to do it again. Number four, the nine day wait. So this kind of links back to number three where, you know, you have a lot of symptoms and you're kind of really hopeful and you, you know it's too early to test. And a lot of people advise not to test early because especially when you're doing a fresh transfer, when you do your trigger injection, it has the HGC hormone in there. So if you test too early, you can get a false positive you know if you're not giving it enough time you can get a false negative so people say don't to test don't test early but to be honest that's easier said than done when you are waiting in that nine day wait all you want to do is no now i got to day four and I had a conversation with my friend who was also going through fertility treatment and she had mentioned something about the progesterone supplement that she was still taking and I said I'm not taking that anymore I thought I had to stop at my transfer day 
So I started to get these real panicky, I was in this like real panicky situation and I contacted the nurses at my fertility clinic and they said, that's fine, just, you know, pick up and start taking your progesterone from where you stopped. Except in my mind, the damage was already done. I had ruined this cycle and if it didn't work, it was all my fault. Um, and little did I know that I was pregnant, but at about day five, maybe day six, I decided that I would take a pregnancy test. So I took a pregnancy test on day six and there was a very, very faint line. Now at that point I thought maybe it's the um, HGC from the trigger injection, maybe I'm pregnant, it's too early to know. So I waited till the following day, I did a second test. When I did the second test, the line was a bit darker. So at that point I felt like I knew that I was pregnant, but I didn't want to get too excited. And then I tested again on day eight and the line was definitely there. So I was pretty sure, but I you know, we're still in a little bit of doubt. I waited and then the next day we had our blood test and I got the phone call from the fertility clinic saying that we had a positive result. Now, I wish I didn't test early. Like the anticipation and the unknown of taking those pregnancy tests and seeing that line, but not really knowing, it kind of took that like real excitement of like, oh wow, you're pregnant. You know, it's, it was it successful for you. So if I do it again, I I think, I think I would try and I'm just saying that I would like to try and not test early. Number five, the experience. So I wish I would have known that everybody's experience is so, so very different. And even though that seems obvious, in all the research that I did and all the Facebook groups that I was on and all the conversations I had with people who had already done it, it's really easy to get caught up in their experience and what happened to them and what they went through. So especially in a negative way, I find on a lot of these sharing platforms, people will kind of put out the bad things that are happening, you know, the the results that haven't come back on their tests or, you know, no eggs being um, collected in egg collection or, you know, just, just little things like that along the way. And it's quite easy to get caught up in that and think, oh, I wonder if that's going to happen to me. Is that happening to me? When in actual fact, you know, my experience was so very, very different. Like I, ha I was quite lucky and I, I say I kind of had that textbook perfect um, fertility cycle and that doesn't happen for everyone. No, I understand as well, but I feel like the good stories aren't shared enough on those platforms. And I don't know whether it's because people don't want to, you know, it's, it is a hard experience for people to go through and there are a lot of ups and downs. And even I feel like a bit strange or a little bit uncomfortable sharing my good experience on these sharing platforms because, you know, I don't want to hurt someone else's feelings. But just know that your experience is going to be so, so very different to a lot of um, people that sharing their story. Yeah. So there you have it. The top five things I wish I had known before I went through IVF. If you like what you've seen today, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you for watching.